Brewers fans, get ready for passion, perspective, and your chance to react. It's time for the longest-running postgame show in Milwaukee. This is the Milwaukee Admirals Baseball Postgame Show, built by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Now is a great time to order your 2017-2018 season tickets and take all summer to pay. Go to MilwaukeeAdmirals.com for more info. Now, a baseball guy who tells it like it is. Your fan host, Tim Allen. It is a final from the desert. The game and the series, it ends with a, well, a Brewers beat down. That was no fun. 11-1, the Diamondbacks over the Brewers in game three of this three-game set. And welcome, everybody. It is the Milwaukee Admirals baseball postgame show built by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. My name is Tim Allen. Amidst and amongst company here, we have Baby Taos, Bill Schmidt. We have Greg Janik here, and we have a special guest to talk uh, Brewers Draft, MLB Draft Expert from the thethirdmanin.com. He is Dan Zelensky. As uh, Danny, you've been with us for uh, for a couple of years now. Later on in the show, dude, I, I can't wait to see what uh, your projection is, is what the Brewers do with that, uh, what, number nine spot tomorrow? Yep, the ninth overall pick. It's great to be on again for another year. It's hard to believe it's already here again. Yeah, and, and if you – well, we'll get a chance to send everybody over to read uh, all your stuff there about the, not just the Brewer draft, but just draft uh, prospects uh, in general. So, and again, over the years, it's been really, really good stuff. You've been with us, um, I want to say, the, what, about four years now? Yeah, four years at the fan here, and then this is my second year on the post game show breaking down yep. the draft for you, you. You know, actually Dan and I are are class of twenty fourteen members of the fan intern class, which has been regarded around these parts as the, the best recruiting class uh yeah, that the fan has ever had. Intern class, yes. I, I know that. And uh well <laughs> you, 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 good thing you, you beat out train wrecks, so <laughs> you have that on your resume. <laughs> All right, seven nine nine twelve fifty. You want to get your reaction on a Brewers eleven to one loss tonight, um, and what to do with the Brewers bullpen? Now you get Chase Anderson, who did work his pitch count up, and I didn't. I, honestly, guys, I didn't think he was going to make it through six, but he did make it through six, just giving up the one earned run. Only walked a man, four hits, eight strikeouts, so he muscled up and got through a pretty good. And pretty potent uh, Arizona Diamondbacks lineup. But then you turn things over to the bullpen. Now, you know, look, offensively, the, the Brewers are struggling to put some runs up lately. That's just the way it is, and, and offense is going to go through that once in a while. You get a 3-2 loss yesterday. You know, you're in a one-zip game into the seventh inning in this one, and the bullpen just Brewers fans explodes. And it it just does, and and I don't know I don't know if I even have the answers to this, but that bullpen, there has to be some concern at Miller Park in the front office about this bullpen, mm-hmm. and maybe that's why Josh Hader was brought up, and maybe that's why some weeks ago they had put Josh Hader out of the rotation at AAA and put him in a couple of uh, relief stints, and and I don't know if that was a precursor to say, hey man. Uh, Let's keep this to ourselves, but there's a problem in our bullpen at the big league level. You, so, you really think so? Because at some point, there has to, common sense has to prevail at this point and, and realize that this is just not working when you're running guys like Carlos Torres, Neftali Feliz, Willie Peralta, and Rob Scahill out there. Yeah, and in that day order, in and day out you, to get beat down, you get Carlos Torres giving up three runs. You get uh, Neftali Feliz giving up a couple of runs. You get Willie Peralta giving up four runs, and you have Rob Scahill giving up a run. Let's see, three plus two is five, plus the four, nine. Uh, that would be ten runs given up out of the bullpen today. Ten runs out of the bullpen today. And the best part was Rob Scahill has the best number out of that whole thing, and he really was the reason why they were able to put the cherry on top with the Paul Goldschmidt shot there in the uh, eighth inning. And that was, yeah, that was a rocket shot. But uh, 799-1250, I don't know if there's a an easy solution to this, but I, I know that uh, it, it won't be, I hope, for a lack of trying. Um... There, it's not like they don't have anybody. It's not like they haven't shown the propensity to hold people accountable, but to just continually run these guys out there and have the same results, you got to think there's a change coming. 
you'd have to think there's a change coming. Now, now again, the conspiracy people, uh, guys, are going to say this Brinson call-up and Phillips call-up and hater call up is a precursor to waving of the white flag because we internally don't believe that we're going to stay in this thing. That's what the conspiracy mm-hmm. theorists are going to say, Billy. They're just going to say, man, this is splash value. This is to keep interest level high. School is letting out. Let's get these kids up here. Let's get them a glimpse of the future and ride this storm out, if you will. Well, it's pretty stormy in the bullpen. I mean, it's all well and good to. To, to bring up Brett Phillips and and uh, and Brinson to cover up for some you know lack of production out of Keon Broxton, but it still doesn't remedy that bullpen out there. No, it doesn't. But the issue also comes, Tim. You look at the rest of this whole lineup. A uh, guy that I've obviously adopted as as my my man, Eric Thames, has really been hurting as of late too. And maybe it was the idea that these guys might not be any worse or any better than the guys that are at the major league level and you start breeding that competition level that you and I have been talking about so much I don't think Thames should have started today I thought it should have been yep, I agree at at first base mm-hmm. and, the same and against the tough left-hander I, I would have just rested Thames here and and they chose not to do it you get the off day tomorrow you're probably going to end up using Thames uh uh, a bunch on Tuesday's doubleheader in St. Louis. It would have been uh, both Brinson and Phillips in this lineup today, and Broxton and Thames would have been uh, on my bench. But that's me, and I don't know if that would have made the difference at all. Uh, you still have to score runs. They didn't do that. They, you know, two last night, just two hits last night. You get uh, one run today on the key on Broxton solo home run. But just, you know, the bullpen blows up. And again, guys, Brewers fans, I don't know if there's an easy answer to that bullpen. I do know this, that Craig Council is doing everything he can. I mean everything he can to, to connect the dots from the first through the ninth. And if he needs to go to the bullpen in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, whatever, he does it. And, it, yep. and that, to me, tells me he's doing everything he can to try and remedy this situation. But Carlos Torres, man, he's on a bad roll. Let's just face it. He's on a bad roll, and, and things will be better for him. But Neftali Feliz, the Willie Peralta experimentation in the bullpen, is not working out real well so far. I mean, this stuff projects out well for a bullpen pitcher, but if you can't get outs, then then – then you can't throw play. The projection, yeah, just throw you the can't projections play. in the garbage can, and, and you're not going to be able to go there. Um, maybe it's Josh Hader coming up because there's a starting rotation issue internally. Maybe there are going to be some changes there, and that's why they want to do bring up bring up Hader, and maybe they insert him into the uh, starting rotation. A little bit messy in that bullpen right now, and they're going to have to fix things. And I'm not sure with a degree of confidence that I can say – that they are um, going to fix it with the personnel that they have now. Let's just say, for the sake of the argument, that they're not going to make any drastic changes in that bullpen. You have what you have. Never thought I'd be saying this, but where's Jan Mourinho's when you need him? Well, how I'm about kidding. this? Uh, San on Twitter already mm-hmm. tweeted out at the fan said, "Is Jabba Chamberlain still under contract? He there's couldn't do guy. any better. He couldn't do any worse." Yeah, there's another guy, the Jared Hughes, Oliver Drake. I mean. If you're going to tell me that these guys are going to, we're just going to roll with these guys, I have confidence with these guys, and Craig Council, just we're going to hear from him uh, within a half hour or so. If he gets out and just says, guys, we have what we have. Uh, there's no troops coming in as a backup here. Okay, then I don't know if I have an extreme amount of confidence in more than two or three of those bullpen pitchers right now. And I don't say this because because I want to. I say this because... I look at the numbers. I didn't make up these numbers. These weren't my numbers that swivel them into my argument here. These are their numbers. These are the guys that put up these numbers through now 60, let's see, 64 games in here. That's a pretty decent sample size. Some of these guys are 15, 17, 20, 22 appearances or better. That's a really good sample size. So I didn't I didn't just, you know, a lot of times in I've been in uh, radio a long long time, guys. And a lot of times you you can you can dissect radio rating. You could have the worst ratings year of your life. But somewhere in there, 
there's there's <laughs> there's a way you can do a couple of mouse clicks and break it down to demographics and daytime nighttime overtime whatever you and find something redeeming about them with a with a pitcher's ERA you might be able to do the same thing with with a uh, pitcher's uh, statistics I should say you might be able to do the same thing but the one thing you can't change is earn runs yep that you can't change. You can't change that in any way. You can't slice and dice and dissect all those numbers. It is an earned run average. And those aren't good numbers. We're going to run down these bullpen numbers because they're pretty outrageous. Yep, I'm, I'm going to have those to, for you ready. <laughs> I'm not happy to say that. I'm really not. And I'm, I'm gosh, I'm, I'm, still, uh, I'm, I'm still positive and confident that these guys are going to stay in it. I, I am. But if, if anybody thinks that the Achilles heel is not the bullpen, I'd like to know what it is. Because I don't think it's anything but that bullpen right now. There is just zero dynamite out there in that bullpen outside of Knable and Barnes. That's it. There's really They're nobody not- that you can point to as the outgetter, as Craig Council continues to say, that the outgetter. There's no one out there right now that you consistently can go to and know they're going to get you outs. Knabel and Barnes, I think, are the only two you can make the argument about. The rest of them, there's six of them. Now, the jury's out on Hayter, let's face it. Let's find out a little bit about him in the big league level, but he's Mm going to take his lumps. We know that. There's five guys out there that I don't think any Brewers fans are pumping their fists to say, okay, good, he'll shut down the sixth and maybe a little bit of the seventh. (laughs) It's just tough. Might surprise you with the numbers here. I don't know if there's an easy solution to that bullpen. The Brewers fall today 11-1. to They get the beat down in the desert. They fall in the game. They lose the series two games to one. They run their mark to 33-31 and thus far here through 64 games. Just 98 games left. Maybe we focus on the sample size there, that there are uh, quite a few games left to get it in gear. You're listening to the Milwaukee Admirals Baseball Post Game Show built by Blaine's Farm and Fleet here on Sports Radio 105.7. Where did things go right? Or, well, not so much. Where did this game turn? Time for today's turning point of the game. This is the Milwaukee Admirals Baseball Post Game Show built by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. And welcome back. Brewers fall 11-1. to They lose the game and the series with this uh, loss. Chase Anderson did his part. Six innings of one-run baseball, striking out eight, and then it was turned over to the bullpen. Turned over to the bullpen. The turning point in this baseball game, for sure. Oh, I see what uh, you did there. Yeah, I know. It was uh, is uh, brought to you by Edible Arrangements Bayshore and we're going to continue to talk to you about our friends at Edible Arrangements Bayshore because uh, it is a cool gift. And I, I've, guys, over the years and longtime listeners to me um, and and the post game show here, I don't endorse something that I don't like. I'll tell you that right now. I, that's just me. Other broadcasters do what they want. It doesn't matter. But I can tell you this: that in my career, I have turned down some some testimonial and endorsement deals this one i have no problem talking about because i've i've uh, sampled the products and i believe in them it's just something different man i can tell mm-hmm. you this there's a ton of people that wonder what to get their mom their girlfriend their wife their girlfriend and their wife their dad their <laughs> aunt their grandma i'm telling you and and i love something different that's what i did for mother's day i, I checked out edible arrangements Bay Shore. well and timmy i've t- been talking to intern annika over there on the other side of the glass her brother is a a game away tomorrow from booking a trip to nationals for uh intramural so- or not intramural soccer but like aau soccer and i said you know oh, what nice. he wins the best thing you could do is go get him a chocolate dip fruit arrangement over at edible arrangements Bay Shore to celebrate they've got <laughs> nice. soccer ball arrangement i've been talking about this baseball arrangement <laughs> that they have the grill arrangement how the vase they have one that's a soccer ball they have one that's a soccer net a hockey net for all you predators fans out there it's edible arrangements Bay Shore at 414-988-9423 uh, chocolate dip fruit arrangement, fresh fruit arrangement, ch- just a box of chocolate covered strawberries. They have apples, bananas, anything good you could think of. They're selling it over there at Edible Arrangements Bay Shorts. 414 988 9423. 
All right, very good. The Brewers fall 11-1. to one. You tell me if you've got an answer for these uh, bullpen numbers. Okay, real quick, I know you're on hold, and we'll get to you. 799-1250. I don't know if I have an answer, but I will be concerned if Craig Council, David Stearns, or both say, hey, man, we're confident in this group of guys. Oh, there's I some underst- conspiracy theories coming in on Twitter, Timmy. I understand you want to send that message, but do that internally. You know how that sounds to us? as fans externally and not that they really care uh, because we're not there and we don't know the rigors of of going through a major league season I understand that but it's tough from our perspective to be confident with these types of numbers all right Corey Knavel in 32 appearances 31 and a third innings pitched 1.15 ERA outstanding right Mm -hmm. everyone's good with Corey Knavel possibly all-star worthy Possibly could be the lone representative in the All-Star game for the Milwaukee Brewers. Okay, now we get to the second-best ERA on this baseball <laughs> team is Rob Scahill. In 13 games pitched, 17 and two-thirds innings pitched. 3.57. Okay. Yeah, I, can, I, I can deal with that. I, I could live with that. I mean, I love Rob Scahill, but he's Rob Scahill. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The best way to put it, he's Rob Scahill. Carlos Torres comes in at 4.86. In 33 games pitched, 33 and a third innings. 4.86. How about Brent Suter? You in think just, he's a reinforcement? In just five games pitched, seven and a third innings. And when you get to Brent Suter's earned run average, he's sitting at 4.91. Now a little bit maybe inflated. Seven innings pitched, four earned runs. Okay, right? and that can ch- that can change with like three scoreless innings or two. Yep, that would maybe c- even cut that thing in half. So we'll give him a little bit of a pass on that. How about how about our friend Oliver Drake checking in at five point one six? And that's in twenty two and two thirds innings pitched across twenty six games. Twenty six appearances. Five point one six. Our buddy Jan Mourinhas, uh, no longer with the organization, he checks in at 5.40, so He's, he wouldn't have been any better. No, it's 16 and two-thirds. <clears throat> All right. Neftali Feliz, big uh, free agent signing, acquisition, $5.38 million. He's going to come in and just uh, be our closer. 5.88. In 26 innings and 28 appearances for Jan Mourinhas. For- Reinforcements some some weeks ago. We say, hey man, it's not it's not working out with you as a starter, Willie Peralta. We're going to move you to the bullpen because we think your stuff projects well out in that bullpen. Oh, we're going to make sure that we we get put you in a position to succeed, Willie Peralta. Six point five seven in fifty innings and two thirds of an inning in fifteen appearances for Willie Peralta. What the hell? Yeah, now a little bit of a pass on Peralta because all those numbers weren't from the bullpen. Right, a lot of those were from his starts, which were also not good. (laughs) Which is also a six-plus earned run average. All right, Uh, let's see. And that's what we have here in our bullpen. There's, There's our Milwaukee Brewers bullpen. I can't help but be concerned about this bullpen, and I think the organization should man up and be concerned as well. They have to be, aren't they? But, right, yeah, let's it appears to, that they are. Let's get to let's get to you guys. Uh seven nine nine twelve fifty. Kenny and West Ben, what's happening? You're on the fan. First of all, let me start out with a little song on about today's game. Mama said there'd be days like this. Mama okay. said there'd be days. You know what? You're gonna get blown out during the course of hundred and sixty two games. Not many blowouts for this team this year. No, that's exactly right. But 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 the contributing factor, nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody wants to talk about the bullpen. Contributing factor, here, 2-1 to one ball game last night, right? Brewers could have won that game. But there's a couple of things that aren't happening right now that were happening for, for quite a while. They were putting runners in scoring position, but for whatever reason, they couldn't get them across the plate. They weren't playing small ball. They're not, they're not doing all the little things when they do get runners in scoring position. And with a slumping team, when you're slumping a little bit and you're struggling, it's up to the boss to make some decisions to do this. Got to help him. Yep, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go negative on council. I know I'm not a council fan. I, I I don't think he has any business running this team. However, here's the deal: we have what Stearns 
he is building the team and has went back and has corrected some farm club things from what we're being told. It's time when the bullpen pitches the way it's pitching to start bringing guys up, move them in. Feliz has to go immediately. He's a turd. But beyond that, when you look at some of the dynamics that aren't happening to build confidence and chemistry, that's concerning to me because here you got a team who's in first place. They, yeah. they have no business, according to MLB and all the experts, even being there. But they are. So now, it, as it opposed to being a rebuild, right, which it is, now you have to say, hold it. We're 60-plus games into the season, and we're in first place. And the world champions are in our division, and they're chasing us. So a couple of weeks changes. away from the halfway mark here, Kenny. Yes, make the changes. But I don't know if there's a good answer when all of them are blowing up in that bullpen. I'm yeah. fine with the offense. The offense is going to get some help. They're going to get they're going to yeah. get VR back, and I'm convinced he gets hot late in this year. This season, okay. they're getting Braun back, and they're getting Shaw back. Okay, but but here's the deal. Right now, in order to 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 keep the team on an even keel, stay in it. Yes. You have got to make some changes that are positive, and you have to show this team that they're winners, that they're in first place. You see guys but walking I, around I, their I, heads I, down. I don't like it, Tim. You and I, Kenny, and by the way, the BC is at 15. Billy, I couldn't call in Friday night because I got it over 25. All right. Well, <laughs> All right I'm, glad, thank I'm you. glad we didn't have a Gary Ellerson. <laughs> thank, thank you Kenny. for, for <laughs> taking your own radio breathalyzer and, <laughs> and you locking yourself up, <laughs> Kenny. All right, th- thanks a lot, Kenny. <laughs> Seven nine nine twelve fifty. Well, Let's squeeze guy. in w- w- one one more here. Can can we do that? We've been just rambling a little bit. Or do we? All right, we can go to Steve. Stephen Mequon, you're next here on the fan. Eleven one Brewers fall. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Uh, sure. I'd like to know what the Brewers' record is against teams that are playing five hundred or better. You know, it it's not as bad as as you think. Uh, we did take a look at that that last okay. time. Uh, somebody had requested that. It's not horrible. Did it, it, it make put them in first place? Um, tell you that they were a contender. Or? I, it was right around the five hundred mark, right where they're about sitting. Around, mm-hmm. yeah. It was around the five hundred. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it's. I mean, All it's right. it's pretty steady and sturdy across the board, man. They're in okay. this thing, and the concern is, how do you fix that bullpen? And I don't know if there's an answer to it. <laughs> I, I don't think there is. You know, you're, you're in year two of a of a rebuild. Your priority wouldn't be spending money and putting together a bullpen. No, no, no. no. I, of course not. I, I get no. you. You're not going to mortgage no. some of the future for for no. a couple of bullpen pieces. And you know, I, bringing I got people you. up, bringing people up. Um, I mean, we don't see the guys in the minor leagues we don't know how they're really progressing and whether they're ready for the major leagues or not you can't just bring them up because there's a vacancy i mean they got i know ready. that th- mm-hmm. man and steve it's right know, right it, on the money man. it is I it is right on the money you, you gotta you know you gotta just trust um, david stearns that he knows what he's doing and uh hopefully he does and, 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 All right. I mean, you can't really expect your two of a rebuild to say we're gonna we're gonna contend for the world series I don't think, quite frankly, Steve, thanks for the call, man. It's spot on. I don't think that Stearns was prepared for this. You don't think that he he was game planning for this team to be as good as they are right now? Yes. I think Council was. Mm -hmm. Council, But Council doesn't make personnel decisions. Stearns does. And I, quite frankly, and it's a great situation to be in, is that his own team overachieves on him and, and pops him in the nose with this stuff. And, hell, like I said, they're a couple of weeks from the halfway mark. And they're in it, but I think it caught him off guard a little bit. And that's why I don't think that there are easy answers here. Seven nine nine twelve fifty. Hey, it's a draft uh, preview show, MLB Draft. I know it's a little bit of a crapshoot, but our draft expert, Dan Zelensky, is in from the thirdmanin.com. His stuff is outstanding online. You might want to check that out. Still to come, we'll hear from Craig Council and getting your reaction here. Bullpen. Woes. And whoa, whoa. <laughs> Are the woes in this one. As the bullpen explodes, Brewers fall 11-1. to So, what's the skipper got to say about this game? 
Let's find out. The Scoop from the Skipper, brought to you by Bryant and Stratton College Athletics, offering athletic scholarships in six junior college sports. Learn more at bscbobcats.com. This is the only station Brewers fans need before and after the game. 105.7 FM, The Fan. So the Tribe drops its third straight on this trip, 6-1 to one to the Rangers. For the Indians, one run on, let's see, one hit. That's all we got, one damn hit. You can't say damn on Don't worry, nobody's listening anyway. And the Brewers fall. They did get a few hits. They did get a run in an 11-1 loss. Welcome back. I don't know how the, the Brewers will address this bullpen, but we just went over the numbers here, and we're starting be, to get into the sample size here where it's 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 tough to back up some of these numbers here it just is very difficult and are they overworked i don't know yeah that's part of it but still you have to combat that with some adjustments in terms of personnel and with some success and you do you do go through every team goes through some bullpen personnel changes every every mm-hmm. team every single year and it's it's going to happen with the brewers i don't know who and i don't know when but it's going to happen and um, you and see there the... are some names down there billy there's some names down mm-hmm. there that they could go down there and reach up reach down there and grab a couple they could Wei chong wong's pitching well he could he's a left-hander that could possibly help you out a little bit uh, you know, I, do, I don't want to bring Brandon Woodruff out of the rotation to come up and help this bullpen, but Michael Blazik's down in the rotation down there at uh, Colorado Springs pitching well. He's pitched out of the bullpen for this team. Can't do any worse. I agree. I mean, am I wrong? I I, 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 if they I can agree. do worse, and, there's an issue. It, I don't think it's out of the question that maybe Brandon Woodruff comes up. And if David Stearns believes in, in the philosophy of – your future rotation guys start in the bullpen, and they, they pay their dues a little bit in that bullpen, get their feet wet. I could see Woodruff, as well as Hader, staying up here into that bullpen. But we'll see. Some of these numbers are just too gaudy, man. And, and it's not because it's, it's three and four and five appearances. These appearances, uh, that column, that number is becoming quite large here. And there's, there's more clarity the longer you get into a sample size in the game of baseball. A short sample size is a little distorted a little bit at times. The longer you go here, the more clarity of who you are is cl- just clearly spelled out here. All right, Richard, I want to squeeze you in here before we get to a Craig Council and get to some uh, MLB draft and what the Brewers are going to do. You're on the fan here. Richard, look, I'm looking Thanks. forward to hearing what you have to say here. Thanks, Tim. As I stated very early in the year, the bullpen was going to be a major problem. and it is. You and I agreed on that, yes. And uh, this team is not going to stay in in first place too much longer because of the bullpen. And there's some other things going on that are major concerns. Thames is trending in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. There's indications that in May he hit 221 for the month of June, 164. It would be much greater and much more impactful if he had a great May and a great June rather than a, Mm -hmm. a great April. Because it seems that the, the pitchers have adapted, and he hasn't adjusted to the pitchers. It might be due to part to his injuries, but as, it seems that uh, he's going down in, in a way that, uh, and maybe Aguilar should be playing much more. He's been going upward as things is going downward. In terms of Skolgard, he's a lesser counsel. He was doing great. But to expect he's not Ted Williams, and to expect him to continue like this, given his past five years where he was a really low average hitter, in fact, a poor hitter. His OPS is about 100 points below the league average. Look over the last five years, mm-hmm. in the low 600s was his OPS. It's not expected for him to continue. A nice short burst. So this offense is in trouble. Broxton is in one of his downsides, whether or not he's one of my favorite players, whether because he's got speed and still bases, but can he hit consistently? And it looks like he can't. He's just up and down. And it would be bad. And any ball player is going to have a couple of days that they're not going to do well. But when he goes off, it's for five, six straight games. 
that is not a major league hitter. I, I think his future, maybe they can trade him and get it, some help in the bullpen. The problem with this team, there, there isn't that much down in the minor leagues to help. There's Blasek, Cravy, maybe. Cravy. Yep. And, and, uh, but you look at, uh, this week, they had to bring up a journeyman starting pitcher, a journeyman who hasn't, and hasn't pitched much in the major leagues, 11 years in the minor leagues. They gotta do better, and they're not ready yet. They gotta get more pitching. I don't know what you would be out if you did. Uh, thanks for the call, Richard. I don't know what you'd be out if you did trade Broxton. And I'm not saying that they should or shouldn't. I'm just saying, what if they did? I mean, I, I, is he really with the with the stacked outfield the Brewers have? Is he really? Are people counting on him to be the guy? I don't. I don't think so. Especially after you you see these guys start to come up, and, and yeah, but I, was, I don't know, Billy. I don't know what you're going to get for him. I mean, right? That's, that's that's the biggest thing. What yeah, are, you yeah, can do? Know. You can do without. Like we've talked about Matt Garza. I think what you're going to get out of Keon Broxton, you can live without that prospect. I, I think so. I, I I agree. All right, let's hear from Craig Council after his team falls in Game Three of this three game set. The scoop from the skipper is brought to you by Bryant and Stratton College. Offering athletic scholarships in six junior college sports. Check out all the details at bscbobcats.com. Boy, a rough one today in the desert. Eleven one. Here's counts. Yeah, I mean we got there's you know we got certainly more than one guy that's struggling a little bit right now. Um, but you know, look right now they got to pitch and they got to and the only way for them to you know get on track is for them to pitch. Um, so we got to throw we got to put them out there and, and they got to they got to figure it out. Do that making changes isn't an option. Yeah, it's certainly an option. Yeah, but I mean, you're, 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 it's not. You can't make. You know, we're, we're limited there for sure. The pitching tool was a good one yeah. that well last time. The what's that? The pitching tool was a good one that well. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, you know, I, th- I think it was that advertised. Two guys have been throwing the ball very well, and they they both threw the ball very well today. So, um, you know, Chase was. He was really good. You know, they had a couple of good at bats in the first inning. Peralta had a good good change up away, had a nice at bat. I think he fell behind Goldschmidt, um, but he pitched well. Chase pitched very well. He pitched himself out of the six, which I was really proud of him for doing. You know, made some very good pitches to to Lamb to a tough hitter. So another excellent start from Chase. Yeah, plus the, the run came out of ball they deflected too. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, we probably caught a break there in the end. I mean, yeah. I, maybe he catched it. It was hit pretty hard. We probably caught a break. Right. What about uh, Brinson getting his feet wet? Uh, he, you know, he had some good at-bats. I mean, he had uh, you know, he was, he was solid at-bats. He, uh, Ray made, you know, he's facing, a, like I said, a tough starting pitcher, and he had, thought he had good at-bats. That at-bat that he took the walk on was a particularly good one, don't you think? It's a nice at-bat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was, you know, he had some at-bats with runners in scoring position right away, some big at-bats, and uh, Ray got him the first time, and I thought he, you know, did a nice job, got himself ahead in the count in that, the uh, the first and second at-bat against Hoover, and eventually drew a walk. Craig, do you, do you think you're trusting Torres in close situations because of he's done the job for you in the past, but not lately? You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, he's, well, we, I mean, he's had lots of hard contact the last five We years. have to put people out there, Tom. <laughs> George, I mean, Torres and, and, and Carlos has done a nice job. I, I mean, he's done a nice job last year. He's done a nice, very nice job at pretty some significant stretches this year. Um, and we need guys to to get out, you know. And, and, and um, you know, like, so we got it. Carlos was the guy today. Um you know, some of those other guys have been used quite a bit, um, and, and we're not going to use them in a situation like that. So, you know, it, it ends up um, going to Carlos, and we've used Carlos quite a bit too um, because he he generally can handle it. What about Feliz's inability to keep the ball in the park? The yeah, I mean, we got concerns in our bullpen. I mean, that's, you know, for sure. All right, there he is, Craig Council, after his team falls in game three of this three-game set. Oh, boy. Bullpen, Some telling bullpen, stuff there bullpen. at the end. Yeah. Uh, they're they're going to have to uh, they're gonna have to figure it out. They, they, they just are. All right, uh, 799-1250 up next. We'll bring in Dan Zelensky, talk about the Brewers' upcoming three selections in day one of this year's MLB draft. 
thethirdmanin.com is where you can find his stuff. Brewers fall today, 11-1. You're listening to the Milwaukee Admirals baseball postgame show built by Blaine's Farm and Fleet here on The Fan. You're listening to the Fan Baseball Postgame Show, presented by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Want 20 bucks Chili's cash? Be listening to Chuck and Winkler tomorrow morning at 835. And know the Chili's MVB to win. Chili's. Chillin' since 75. And here's Tim with today's Chili's MVB. All right, this is a little bit of a difficult uh, Chili's MVB. Tomorrow morning, Chuck... And Winkler, they will ask you, who is the Chili's MVP in the 11-1 loss? First person to correctly identify the player's name we'll give you right now wins the free food from Chili's, Chili's, Chillin' since 75. Well, you got Broxton and a solo shot. There's your one. You got Chase Anderson, six innings of one-run ball. Let's give it to you. I'm not giving it to Broxton. Sorry. Well, he broke out of that horrific 0-for-21 slump or whatever and. And God's four greener his, that I, was. I think four for his last 52 prior to that home run. No. Danny, you got any ideas? Chase Anderson for finally laying down a bunt in over oh, a year. Oh, I love <laughs> about it. A year. You go. That's the tip <laughs> that's in it. we needed. Yep, there it that's is. it, Danny. All right, uh, Dan Zelensky chose this one. Chili's MVP when they asked tomorrow morning is Chase Anderson. Six innings of one run ball. Striking out eight in that performance. All right, uh, Dan Zelensky from the thirdmanin.com, and uh, I'll be the third man into our conversation here as uh, Brewers prepare for the draft tomorrow. Now, I've been reading a little bit on this, Dan, and there's, there's it's it seems to me, you tell me, it doesn't seem like the most richest of drafts. Is that correct? That's exactly correct. Before the season started, it was supposed to be a lot of college pitchers, uh, top heavy towards the top, but a lot of them just didn't perform up to expectations and kind of have had uh, pedestrian seasons. Uh, there could have been maybe as many as seven college pitchers selected in the first 15 picks oh. before the season started, and now maybe it's going to be three. So a lot of guys have fallen off and just haven't lived up to expectations, which has kind of changed the dynamic of the draft a bit. Okay, and what what you know of, of the draft... Um... What would you do in terms of uh, organizational philosophy? Let's say you're David Stearns and, and you're trying to build this thing up. Would you go with, number one, position players versus pitchers, and then, number two, college players versus high schoolers? Mm-hmm. In this draft in particular, it would definitely be just the best player available with the most ceiling or the highest ceiling, and probably – High school guys, just because it seems like the college hitters don't have as high of a ceiling as these high school guys and just are going to be maybe solid major leaguers, but they aren't all-star to star caliber talent with potential. And then even on the pitching side, some of those college guys are going to move quickly through the system, but again, they're maybe best number twos, if not middle to back then. The rotation okay. guys. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. I gotcha. So, what? A, thing, a couple of things I'm reading. Uh, Jordan Adele mm-hmm. out of Louisville. Uh, Austin Beck, a high school out of a high schooler out of North Carolina. Any thoughts on those two? I'll start with Austin Beck. Uh, according to some of the sources I've been talking to, he's worked out for Atlanta and the Athletics, and he seems like he's probably gonna maybe go higher than the Brewers pick. He's a guy from North Carolina. Last year was out during the summer showcase circuit with a knee injury. And so scouts are a little concerned about how he's going to do against elite level pitching with the wood bat just because they haven't seen him. And then Joe Adele, he's a guy who is a favorite to go to the Brewers right now. Again, a high school outfielder from Louisville, five tool potential, 6'2, 195 pounds, massive raw power. He hit, what was it, 25 home runs. This oh, year. he's an outfielder, a center fielder. Yeah, this is this is okay. the guy that the comparison that they've been putting on is Bo Jackson, right? Yeah, and when someone told him that, he just laughed. I mean, <laughs> obviously, it's not a fair comparison to make to anyone. Joe Adele could be the best player in this draft class when we look back at it in maybe ten years. He has that high of a ceiling. His one concern is that he maybe swings and misses a little bit too much. But when I asked him about that, because I've talked to him twice, he mm-hmm. kind of pushed that off to the side and said, 
well, he's only struck out nine times, too. Let's make that clear this season. And <laughs> <laughs> he said most of the time when he struck out this year, it's been because umpires are expanding the zone a bit. He knows it's not a strike, but they're still calling it. And he's also faced elite-level pitching in some instances uh, this spring. So he's not too worried about it. And based on talking to him, talking to some other people and watching some video on it, I don't think it's going to be a major problem where it's going to hold him back from – making uh, the major leagues, I think he has that five-tool potential that people want from a center fielder. Okay, uh, and he's shot that they uh, go after Royce Lewis, who's a uh, prep shortstop? I guess there's a chance. I don't think he falls that far. I've talked to him before, and he's a great kid. He's got a great understanding of the game. Again, kind of a five-tool potential guy. Not a huge power, but he can maybe hit 20 home runs at the shortstop position or center field. Speedster, great glove, great arm. But well, compare him to uh, someone like Jay Gatewood, who the Brewers, I believe, drafted as a shortstop, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, so is he in, in that? Because uh, Gatewood, I always thought, was a little bit big, but although the game's becoming a little bit bigger as well. But uh, does this kid have some size then? He's only 6'1", 185, so he's kind of been on the smaller side. Again, he's known for his speed and stealing bases. He projects as a top-of-the-order type bat. So, he again, he's one of the best. He is probably the best prep position player in this class and will probably not fall any farther than 7th to Arizona. Okay, uh, if if you're going by position... Uh, Virginia first baseman Patton Smith. Do we know anything about this cat? He's an interesting name. He's hasn't shown tons of power this year, but his strike zone discipline and consistency at the plate have been tremendous. He has hardly struck out this year. He's got great kind of contact, able to hit it into the gaps and stuff like that. Ooh, I like that. Mm-hmm. He's not a bad player. He athletically, he's not great. He's slower. He's profiles as a first baseman for sure in the major leagues even though he's played a little left at his time in Virginia he's for sure a first baseman but he does have improving power but he's more known for being a gap-to-gap hitter who hardly strikes out all right very good this is hard to argue uh, with yeah interesting stuff here from uh, Dan Zelensky our draft expert uh, for the last several years on the post game show here the third man in dot com we'll cut continue our conversation after the uh, break here and uh, Billy if you want to jump in here as well you got a couple of questions David Stearns I mean he they Todd Johnson and and Stearns and company they've uh, uh, they're on the doorstep here of uh, another draft and and I I tell you I gotta I gotta say this before the break can I ask what Bruce side was doing for a few years (laughs) <laughs> Dan, seriously. Now and again, I don't want I don't want to, you know, just pound on the dead here. Thank and, and you. And again, I I don't want you to 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 step uh step all over the grave either. Mm-hmm. No. Uh and I've met Bruce Side several times and I thought he was a cool guy, but I, overall, it appears to me, now I'm no draft expert, but it appears to me he wasn't that good. No, and it's funny you talk about that. I've written an article on my website about looking back at the first round picks over the last 10 years and most of them have been just complete busts i mean Mm -hmm. talk about eric garnett a right-hander from indiana man forgot about him i'm not touching a a a big 10 uh (laughs) player i I, honestly unless he's a position player where i get a large sample size for a couple i'm not touching a pitcher from the midwest there's no way i would do that uh but uh, yeah you know that's it's just did i hear this right that it's on the on the twenty five man roster as we see it right now. The only two drafted by the Brewers uh, was uh, Jimmy Nelson and Ryan Braun. And Ryan Braun. Yeah, that sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Jeez, like Arcia, he had to be a. Arcia was a signing. Was a yeah, signing. He was an international sign. Yeah. Right? Yep. Hater Good was a lord. Player. I mean, come on, man. That I mean, <laughs> people wonder why we're behind the eight ball right now. Exactly. It's going to take a little bit. I, again, I I like liked past tense Bruce side but uh, all right we'll take a break here get a sports flash come back uh, talk a little bit more about the MLB draft with uh, Dan Zelensky uh, the draft tomorrow the Brewers have three selections tomorrow we'll have some audio on on the uh, air on Tuesday 
Um, as the uh, Brewers fall today, by the way, bullpen blows up. Chase Anderson, six innings, one run. Then the bullpen gives up ten runs <laughs> from the seventh inning on. And, uh, by the way, when you're leading at home, you don't even bat in the ninth, do you? Uh, no. Yeah, I, I checked the rules of baseball. Yep, you only bat eight times. So they gave up seven. Uh, they gave up ten runs in the seventh and the eighth innings. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, you're listening to the Milwaukee Admirals <laughs> baseball post game show built by Blaine's Farm and Fleet here on the Fan. Let's add this one up, Brewers fans. Time to go inside the box score. Brought to you by Dave and Buster's Wauwatosa. Eat, drink, play, and watch sports. This is the Milwaukee Admirals baseball post game show built by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. And after a game like today, it's, uh, well, it's, it's no wonder we're talking MLB draft. That is the, uh, uh, the topic of conversation here with Dan Zelensky of the thirdmanin.com. Again, guys, so I want you to check out, those of you really into the uh, Major League Baseball draft, that is the site. He talks to all these guys. He interviews these guys. Mm-hmm. And so check that out. Let's go inside the box here real quick. I don't even think we need to know the entire box score here, uh, Billy, but uh, Inside the Numbers brought to you by Dave & Buster's in Wauwatosa, Eat, Drink, Play, and Watch Sports. I think we just start out with, uh, we, we know that Keon Broxton knocked in the run with a solo home run, okay? They didn't yeah. get many hits in this ball game. But let's just run through Chase Anderson, his, his uh, performance was six innings, one run. Just run through the bullpen numbers. Well, Timmy, first I do want to start uh, offensively really quickly. Uh, Lewis Brinson, 0 for 2, did draw two walks and on base percentage of 500. Uh, that's, that's pretty nice to have at the top of the order. As he, as Tim said, four hits only for the Brewers. Uh, those coming from Domingo Santana, Aaron Perez, Keon Broxton, and Orlando Arcia. But for the bullpen, it was not good. Carlos Torres, two thirds of an inning, three runs that was earned. Uh, with two strikeouts and two home runs for Carlos. Naftali Feliz comes in, doesn't record an out, gives up a couple of hits, a couple of runs, and a couple of walks for who was supposed to be the Brewers' closer. Willie Peralta then comes in trying to stop the bleeding, and he's unsuccessful. One inning pitch, three hits, four runs. They were all earned. A walk and a strikeout. Rob Scahill comes in and puts the cherry on top, getting the final out in the eighth inning. But before that, he gives up a grand slam to Paul Goldschmidt only credited with one hit and one earned run for our buddy Rob Scahill. Uh, 33 and 31 now after mm-hmm. this uh, Brewers 11 to 1 loss. Wow. Okay. All right, Dan Zelensky, uh moment of truth here. Three picks tomorrow. I believe they're 934 Four. and 46. Mhm. Correct. Okay. Who are you going to be happy with? Uh, give us give us a few players that you're going to be happy with and who, who you would go with and who you think the Brewers are going to go with. Well, for the ninth overall pick, I'd be happy with, and I think the Brewers are going to go this way, is Joe Adele. We've talked about him already, but again, he's a high school outfielder from Louisville, 5'2 potential, 6'2", uh, 195. Totally fits that Brewer mold that they're up trying the to middle, go for. They love up-the-middle mm-hmm. guys that can sure move does. around, yeah. have high ceilings. I think he will be the pick, and I think he would be the best pick based on kind of how the board and the draft looks like it's going to fall tomorrow. Now, was Lewis Brinson, speaking of Brinson here, uh, he, he, he was drafted as a high schooler, is that right, in 2012? Or was he a college guy? High schooler. Yeah, he was. So in 2012, <laughs> he's in the, in, in the uh, amateur draft. And now we're – so it's five years now the, the, the point here for some position players? It seems to be that way four or five years. Obviously, there's some outliers with guys making it at 19, 20, 21. But usually, again, yeah, it's four to five years. You can expect these high school guys to make the major leagues. Okay. And if you're jumping for joy in in pick number two for the Brewers, what name would be announced? Another prep outfielder, Drew Waters. He's a center fielder from Georgia, switch hitter. He's... Solid contact hitter, got some good raw power, another speedster who can steal bases, kind of top of the order, most likely bat, who's, a, again, switch hitter, great defensively, really strong arm. And he's a guy who could probably be there for the 34th pick. He's been considered towards the back end of the first round, but, again, he's – I wouldn't say he's got five-tool potential, but he's pretty close, and he's a switch hitter, so that 
is an added bonus, I guess. All right. And then their third selection, that's a competitive balance pick. Mm-hmm. Mark Vientos. He's a shortstop but figures to play third base at the pro level from Florida. He was once considered maybe one or two years ago as the best player in this draft class, but then obviously with more scouts seeing him, nitpicking a bit, he's kind of fallen off a little bit. And we'll go in the second round most likely unless a team – really wants him and kind of reaches for him he's consistent uh average wise probably figures to hit about 275 at the major league level someday if he makes it solid power for a shortstop athletically is what's going to kind of hold him back from being a shortstop and will probably force him over to third base he's just not as athletic as you would want an up the middle type guy but he's great defensively smooth fielder strong arm and he kind of fits that Brewers profile of up the middle, mm-hmm. high ceiling, talented high school kid. And Dan, when you yeah. look at guys gotcha. that the that the Brewers do want to start looking at, uh, it's it's been well documented that there is kind of a void at first base talent mm-hmm. coming up in the Brewers minor league system. Is that a way uh, you could kind of see it going? Is that kind of a way you could see shaking out with some of these, you know, obviously very athletic guys? It doesn't take a genius to play first base. I, I played a little bit of first base <laughs> exactly. in my day, and you can see different guys being able to play that spot. Uh, is that one of those where you could see them kind of moving one of these pieces over? Yeah, we've talked about Jacob Gatewood as a former first round pick. I think he had a couple that, of bombs today. Yeah, he by could the way. be that future first baseman. Mark Vientos, maybe just but defensively with his arm strength. He kind of would is that third baseman you would like to have there. Mm-hmm. Cool. We talked about Pavin Smith going back to him. He wouldn't be a bad option, but Virginia guys haven't done well in professional baseball, so I think that's kind of scaring some teams back just with a track record of Virginia well, players. He's still gonna go, but you yeah. just don't think he'll go in day one, though, right? Pavin Smith. Yeah. Yeah. He'll okay. go. He'll go top twenty for sure. Okay. But it's actually funny. I know we talked about the college arms kind of being the strength of the draft before the draft. Now it's kind of a first baseman. There's a Nick Prado, a high school first baseman, who could go as high as five to the Braves if the Braves want to cut a deal with someone and sign a guy who falls later on, or there's even some other college guys. So first base is kind of the strength of this draft, which okay. scouts hate because it's first base, and yeah, a lot of guys wow. can play right, first exactly. base. <laughs> That's true. All right, uh, let me ask you this so before we get to uh, some Wisconsin guys. Uh, that that are potentially there. Go back to uh, last year's draft, Dan, and just put a put a, a nutshell on on that, if you would. Corey Ray, Lucas Ursag, and I, I can't recall the the third pick, the catcher, I think. Um, how, how did you Luciano. think that fared? Yeah, how did you think that fared here uh, for for now a year into that mm-hmm. uh, draft? I really liked that draft last year. Uh, at that at where we are kind of right now and so far it looks like it's paid off Corey Ray kind of dealt with some injuries towards the end of last year in his brief pro debut Ursig is struggling a little bit right now in his full pro season but he's got sky high potential and Feliciano is going to take some time just being a prep catcher but I think right now they did it the right way taking high ceiling guys who up the middle type players where you can kind of shift around if need be and there's been some talk going all around Major League Baseball, this this want of of college athletes and college guys to play at the positions. Uh, there are some college guys in the state of Wisconsin that are going to be making some noise and going to be going here in the next couple of days. Mm-hmm. Dalton Varshow, he's a catcher from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. I've seen him play. Yeah, his pop played in the bigs. He did. Uh, Gary, he played, I think, eight years in the Major Leagues, also was a coach for a long time. I think he had one or two games where he's the interim manager with the Phillies. Um, he's a guy who is probably maybe going to be a first-round pick, if not second-round or worst-case scenario third. But he's arguably the top catcher in this draft class. Undersized, he's listed at 5'10", 200 pounds. He's maybe 5'10", with me standing next to him. But (laughs) undersized guy, very athletic. He's a hitter. And defensively, he's got a little work to do with his arm. But worst-case scenario, he's a guy who figures to play second or the outfield. And he's been really lighten it up in these pre-draft workouts he's worked out for the brewers he's worked out for the cubs he's worked out for the white Sox. so he's a guy who figures to maybe go high in the second round so and then another guy is jaron kendall he's an outfielder from vanderbilt wisconsin native he's a guy who had the potential to go number one to the twins he's kind of fallen off wow 
His biggest issue is his strikeout rate. Talking to some scouts who saw him in high school and now again in college, that's always been an issue for him, and that's kind of what scares teams off. Uh, this year he struck out 28% of the time in his at-bat, so, and a guy who is going to be more of the top of the order, a little bit of power, a lot of speed, but that scares teams off, and he's probably going to mm-hmm. go maybe White Sox 11, so he's still going to be a high pick. He's just with the nitpicking again. He's kind of fallen off a little bit. And then Austin Jones, a right-handed pitcher from Whitewater, he's a guy who who can maybe go in the top 10 rounds. He hey, did a- that kid go to Walker or Wauwatosa West? Yes, I played yeah. against that kid in high yeah. school. Like you used to call him Bones Jones. Did you hit him? <laughs> Uh, no, I did not. I, I was the announcer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, last year, uh, so does it appear, though, that it won't be in the state of Wisconsin here as good a draft as last year? You had Lux down in Kenosha. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you had a few. Derek Heffel out of Racine St. Katz. You had uh, the, the – I think there was a pitcher or a catcher out of Verona going to the Twins. Yeah, so second round. It, it probably won't be as good a class in the state here? No, Prep-wise, that was a class that Wisconsin has never seen probably and might not see for a while. There's cool. a lot of guys who are going to major schools. A Zach Clayton from Oconomowoc, a shortstop, who's going to Oregon State. He's a guy who teams are watching, but three more years of development at Oregon State. And there's some other guys, pitchers, who got some size, but again, they're high 80s and Figure mm-hmm. to go there's, to college and some develop. Some Jandrowski kid going to NIU, and I, I think <laughs> <laughs> just throwing it out there. All right, uh, we'll take a break here. Come back. Lewis Brinson is up. He is Dan Zelensky. Speaking of long Polish names, uh, we appreciate his time. <laughs> uh, and and certainly check out the site, guys, just in preparation for the draft. Super, super good. The third man in dot com. It's on well, our Twitter page. You have no no excuse to not go check it out. All right, cool. We'll hear from Lewis Brinson next and, and talk a, a couple of more minutes with Dan Zelensky after this on the Milwaukee Admirals baseball postgame show built by Blaine's Farm and Fleet on Sports Radio 105.7 FM, The Fan. Now here's the behind-the-scenes postgame update as we take you inside the clubhouse. Brought to you by WeatherTech Windows and Doors. Receive 50% off qualifying installations with no money down. Visit weather-tek.com for info. This is the Milwaukee Admirals baseball postgame show built by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. It's been a whirlwind. Um, you know, being in Colorado Springs, it's already hard to breathe. And when uh, Rick Sweet called me and told me I was going to big leagues, pack my bags, I couldn't even, I couldn't breathe. Um, he just told me to, you know, drink some water and try to breathe and, you know, just pack your bags and I'll see you at the field. Um, but the last 24 hours has been, you know, fastest day of my life, um, best day of my life so far. And, um, you know, I can't thank God enough and uh, all the people that supported me and, and, you know, gave me all those phone calls and text messages yesterday. Can't thank you guys enough for the support. So, um, you know, I'm very excited to be here. All right, there he is, Lewis Brinson, his first day in the bigs today, 0 for 2 with a couple of walks. Dan Zelensky, the third man in dot com. Your final uh, name here is where the Brewers would uh, draft. With the 34th pick, Tristan Beck. Could be an option. Not saying the Brewers have even talked to him, but they did draft him in 2015, coming out of high school in the 34th round. So they're aware of him, and I'm sure they're following him. Gotcha. He was with Stanford, draft eligible, eligible sophomore who didn't pitch this year because of back issues, but would have been a top 10 pick had he been healthy. So Dan, you're going to join us again on Tuesday evening. So check that out. We'll be breaking down day one of the MLB draft, and we uh, appreciate you guys tuned in. Faith in the Zone is next, and. Uh, As always, thanks for listening and smile, Milwaukee. The world will smile back.